Good afternoon to you all. Let me welcome you all for this Kansai Neurolike Parents Investor Meet Q Q4 and FY23 earnings. It's a long time that we had this investor meet, maybe 20 years back, and we always uh, wanted to have this. And our new managing director, Mr. An Hello. 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 Yeah. Sorry, sorry for this interruption. Uh, so our new managing director, Mr. Anu Jain, who took our office from, who took this position from 1st of April, has been consistently telling me we should have this meet. And as per his direction, we are having this meet today. And it will be our endure to have this every year. So today, let me welcome Mr. Anuj Jain, who is here uh, to come on stage. Mr. Anuj Jain is with the company for the last 34 years, and he has risen from from uh, from the manager position to this position. And he has he has been various fields: marketing, manufacturing, uh, research, research. Various he has been handling various portfolios. I also welcome Mr. Jason Gonzalez, who is a director. Uh, uh, materials and supply chain and IT. We, we also have our entire management committee here, which you can interact with them during the course. And now I request Mr. Anuj Jain to take the stage. Hello. Is the sound okay on the back side? Yeah. Good evening friends, Namaskar, welcome all of you, uh, really a great pleasure, uh, I think uh, when I took over last year, he said April, so it was not this April, it was last year April, 1st April and uh, when I took over I think I had a chat with some of you and we only advised that it will be a good practice if we do uh, this kind of meet physically once in a year, so this is the first time we are attempting that and as Prashant said it will be our endeavor to do it. You know, every year. So welcome all of you and thanks for your cooperation, support and uh, valuable insight which we keep getting you know, from all of you. Thanks for that and continued support. Uh, we have the entire marine Community team here. You are, you know, you know Prashant Pai very well, CFO and in the company for last 33-35 uh, years. You know him, you know Jason Gonsalves, he has been a part of all the this uh, online what we do. Uh, Jason Gonsalves is heading the supply chain, uh, the corporate planning. The procurement, so he is also in the company, the first company he joined you know, uh, as an MBA and he continued, he also gone through a various you know, kind of portfolios. We also have here Abhijit Natu, Abhijit please get up, maybe the MC committee if you can just come here, I can just introduce all of you. So the entire team is here, so Abhijit Natu, he is the manufacturing head, very good uh, person, in fact he has been having experience in, uh, he had experience in Asian paint and then he is with us for last 12-14 years. Uh, he understand the best practices of manufacturing and uh, all you know new things what we are trying the manufacturing is something is about his creating. So Rohit Malkani is the is my mic working? So even if it is not working I think my voice can reach to you. So Rohit Malkani is the head of sales and marketing of decorative. He joined company two years back. Uh, he has worked with Gillette, Asian Paint. Last he was in Crompton but very long time Asian Paint. So he is the head. 
uh, Ram is the sales head, so very good, excellent relations with the dealers in the market for many, many years. He had worked in the, you know, many geographical uh, geographies, and now he is in the place and he is heading the sales. Uh, we have uh, Govind Rajan, who is our company secretary, uh, the legal expert, again, a very long hand in the company, 100% uh, compliance for last so many years he has been maintaining. We have Kotera San, Kotera San. So Kotera San recently got posted in India. He is also a part of marketing. One of the initiative what we are driving, initiative, Kotera San is driving. So he's a representative of Kansai in Japan, in India. Sudhir Rane had a variety of experience. He handled decorative, he handled industrial, and currently he is the head of HR. He also handled all our subsidies, which are international subsidies and local subsidies. So quite a, again, in a big number of years, around 30 years, he is with us. We have Lakshman Nikam, a very, very solid hand in terms of technology. is one of the master in technology. His expertise is there in the automotive, general industrials, and in the decorative also. So one of the very rare person who has this kind of technological experience. So he is working with us for many, many years. We have Jayakota San, who is the, you know, the head of technical and uh, quality control. So Jayakota San also is there in India for you know, a few years now, for four years. He is also a representative of Kansai in Japan. And they provide us the technology and the help to see that, you know, the quality uh, focus remain at the top. We have Amrit Rekhi, you know, he is, head, is the head of sales and marketing of industrial, which covers automotive, general industrial, auto refinishes. So this entire team, we thought that, uh, you know, when we talk to you quarterly basis, maybe, you know, that we are not able to, uh, you know, showcase the entire team to you. Since we are doing it physically, I thought it's the right opportunity to showcase the entire team. So this is the team which is keeping this company resilient and, you know, they are the people who are, you know, bringing a lot of innovations in the company and taking the company forward. Thank you all of you. So uh, I'll just take you three, uh, through the presentation, you know, today, and uh, uh, we'll try to share some of the things with Lido Company. So this is the this is the agenda, and not that I'm going to go through every slide because this presentation is uploaded, but maybe some of the slide where I want to talk about, maybe you know, I want to share something on that. So this slide is on the uh, the business environment, but I'm not going to talk much on that. I think you are aware of the challenges which are going on uh, in the country, in the world, or maybe in the industry. What I want to share with you is a narrow -like story. So I think that would be something interesting for you to know. So if you see, our purpose has been create environment for a healthy and beautiful future. So we want to see that, you know, today we are conscious that we are inclusive organization. And when we are working, we must ensure that the, the product, the environment, the atmosphere, what we are creating, it should be good for our future generations. That was one of the reasons that uh, in the past we were the first company to introduce healthy home paints, uh, low VOC, zero VOC, lead free, you know, those initiatives because this is, you know, our purpose. The vision is we design solutions that protect, inspire and touch lives every day. So basically we provide beauty and protection to the surfaces, okay. Uh, maybe we are known as decorative industrial company, more than industrial company, but we provide beauty and protection to the all kind of surfaces. So if you see this picture, you know, this is very close to our heart. So inside or outside, any kind of surface if you see, we have a product available for that. So generally we believe that every second house, third house has something there which is painted with Neralek. Because it could be refrigerator, it could be oven, it could be microwave, it could be a fan, it could be you know air conditioner, it is a hairpin, you know the ladies what they put hairpin in the, you know that is also painted with Neralek. Uh, the artificial jewelry, you know we supply coatings for that. Then two wheeler, three wheeler, tractors, the bridges the metro, uh, there's so many things and obviously the interior walls and exterior wall. So, so that's what, you know, we take a pride that uh, each and every surface and that's what our motto is that any surface which is emerging surface, we should have a coating, you know, for that. As a brand, we are a power brand. So today, maybe in terms of our share or size, we are number three, but in terms of mind share, we are number two and solid, you know, number two brand. Uh, we are known for our innovation. So if you look at uh, Japanese technology, which is, you know, that we stand for the high quality and the jingle, Jab Ghar Ki Raunak Badani, it's a very, very, you know, the asset what we have created over a period of year and, you know, people still, even the new generation uh, sing that jingle, know that jingle very well. And some of the product which I am going to talk in the subsequent slides also, what we have introduced are, you know, different kind of products. So that's there in our, uh, you know, that uh, DNA that we, we, you know, keep innovating. And this, this is what we have created in last 100 years. And obviously that's our legacy, what we have built that 103 years, you know, the you know, brand. 
because today in you know today's time i think there are less number of companies who are able to survive for 100 years so i think if we are able to come to this stage the adaptability is something which is there which is our forte so that's something what we created in 100 years what i want to talk today is about this slide and this is what i think if uh, you have been attending the uh, the quarterly calls i have been talking about it that what we have been working on for last one year uh, so we have been in decorative you know that uh, the the innovation because when we talk about the market is changing the competition is changing all these things happening what we are going to to do to see that we are on the path of success so this is in short like paint plus that's a new positioning we said because paint is supposed to be about color okay but today if you see we are known for technology in the industrial also and technology is playing a bigger role you know because te technology is functionality technology is sustainability technology is something which is you know giving you a something which you have not thought about the product so paint plus in the decorative is the creation of the technology where we said it is not all about color it is about functionality and sustainability we started with beauty gold washable which is saf or safe paint we start then we get into mica marble stretch and sheen uh, which is you know that uh, the stretch paint but there are two part of paint plus one is a unique product the second is that offer a feature which is available at a higher price in the market but you make it available at a lower price so that you are able to increase the volume of Uh, that product recently we introduced excel everlast 12 which is like a self cleaning paint so with every rain when the rain comes layer thin layer of the paint comes off and your building looks new 12 year warranty excel everlast we introduced a product in waterproofing no damp which bring down the temperature of the surface by 14 degree centigrade and 12 year you know that warranty of the waterproofing we give for that product so that product also we have introduced the kashmir Uh, impression kashmir the no smell it's a very pure product so if there are children at home the old age people at home they have some kind of allergy with the product so impression kashmir it's like a pure product and the no smell product this is that something we have introduced so we have decided the range of product in this year and the entire range we have you know executed in this year so we wanted to place the product which are at the different price point a different value proposition that paint plus portfolio in this year 22 23 we completed second part services we introduced the services in the year 2000 but uh, maybe the market was not catching up but post covid or you know we are seeing the change the behavior of the consumer today we feel the time is apt and right to get into the services so we started the services first quarter we started this initiative and it took time because we have to build a lot of infrastructure so we actually we placed the team in around more than 400 450 cities but digitally you know that uh, we started with 50 60 70 and now we have almost crossed 100 cities uh, for the services and uh, the proposition is that 5 days uh, next generation 5 days painting is the proposition which is very very unique dust free painting which is very very unique and what we have done during the year is that uh, we have created a setup of lead generation and the lead conversion uh, the call center setup and then how do we complete uh, this you know taking the lead and converting to a business when we started our conversion rate because this is all digital system and it works on the conversion basis when we started the conversion rate was 1% 2% uh, slowly we are reaching around 7 8% going closer to 10% which is supposed to be a benchmark in the lead generation model uh, the call center you know because who attends the customer the turn around time we say that when we started it was some hours now it is about 10 minutes then attending the customer the, you know again it was in days you know uh, taking 7 days to 10 days time not has come down in 3 days time so we implemented the system and now it is taking a shape and uh, digitally now we have started painting 500 homes every month so on the yearly basis about 6000 homes we have painted uh, we are you know painting 500 homes per day and in totality as i said this is online and digital but if i include the uh, offline also then about 20000 homes uh, we have painted but this has picked up the pace in last 3 uh, 4 months because earlier we were setting up digital system infrastructure Uh, and then we said that now we are going to scale it up so this is one area which we are ready with then the painters because our industry is uh, uh, quite divided you know almost 40 50% people go with the recommendation of the painters or you know influencers so we have set up a team which is just a promotion team who deals with the painters and basically idea is that you know painter has a potential from there you know how do we get share of wallet how do we increase our share of wallet so in terms of training incentivization uh, you know the discussion about the product helping them Uh, you know going to the sites so that consumer confidence goes up so that's another activity what we have created and so far you know when we exited the year 100000 painters have started participating 
where we are able to and some of the painters which got dropped you know when we were losing some share in the past yester years we are able to get them back so this has uh, you know picked up some traction the contractor which is basically related to a project business because there is a verticalization happening in the earlier it used to be a phenomena of metro cities then it has gone into the other a class cities and now it is spreading so we were there in the 35 cities and we said we'll you know we'll go to 70 75 cities over a period of time we have already crossed 55 to be specific 57 cities now we have placed our team and uh, trained them and created a standard operating process uh, the 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 pipeline system because this works on how many sites are there in the pipeline and then what is the conversion rate and we are gaining maturity in this contractor business the next thing is about architect and interior designer so uh, earlier uh, traditionally the, the the influence of the architect interior designer used to be 5% 6% uh, in the country but today there are towns and we have identified around 27 towns where the influence of the architect and interior decorator is decorator is about 20% and that is quite high and architect interior decorators are like doctors you know in the medical field once you prescribe then you know people use that shade or use that paint so again a team set up the so, you know the uh, the digital uh, methodology uh, in, interface with the architects and the team where you know that uh, we have started registering the architects their sites we have started registering we have provided you know started providing them the support and we have started generating some business because it's a, it's a different business model but we had given it a shape and now we have started generating business so this also so these are some of the initiatives what we have taken during the year so we had a brand the mind share but we said that at the field what do we execute so that we are able to connect these dots so this is some of the work which we have done and why we are talking about this work today because we have started gaining the traction from this particular work and therefore we are going to expand it you know further uh, this slide i already spoke about uh, you know we can see some of the examples here uh, same uh, the product and project in, i think i i covered the point when i was talking about it but uh, you can refer to this slide later these are the number of product the paint plus product which i spoke that what we launched if you see the packaging you know that here it is very clear that when the customer goes to the market what is the journey he goes through so he talk about the brand or not a brand then he and want to understand that whether i want uh, this you know sheen finish or the matte finish thereafter what is the single parameter where the product is different so the packaging is designed in a manner that if the consumer look at the packaging he is able to understand what is that unique difference in the product on the side if he goes on the packaging he is also able to identify the other uh, the benefits Uh, to, to to talk about these benefits uh, through the digital medium on the website we are you know placing the difference that you know this how this product is different and if somebody want to because in the paint industry the problem the pain point of the customer is he doesn't understand that how this paint is different from the other paint so we are working to ensure that he is able to understand that how this product is different from this and if i am paying a price why i am paying a price so that is how we have created uh, uh, this packaging and uh, these are some of the things which are related to uh, if you remember we spoke about in the distribution so we started a concept of shopi so this is the actual picture of the shopi we have already crossed uh, uh, there are two kind of models so uh, overall it's about we have crossed 100 but uh, typically for this shopi you know we have executed 15 in the market the response is good and i think going forward will increase the numbers of the shopis also these are some campaign so you know that uh, in this year we have uh, uh increase our marketing expenditure and uh, we are doing a lot of uh, work on expanding the communication so these are some of the communication which we have done uh, uh then in the product related which i spoke about you know paint plus so these are the some of the campaign and some of the new film which we have executed very recently i am not sure whether you we would have seen it so we would like to showcase uh, our some of the new films here so this is for uh, नरल इंप्रेशन कश्मीर नो स्मेल नेरो इंप्रेशन कश्मीर नो स्मेल इम्पॉसिबल लगी सच हुआ तो मैं पेंटर बन जाऊंगा नो स्मेल ये सिर्फ पेंट नहीं जापानीज टेक्नोलॉजी वाला पेंट प्लस है पेंट इतना खास घर ले आए कश्मीर का एहसास so this is nerlek kashmir no smell this is a new chhat se barsi pehle kar garmi pani mein soon gaya ha 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 ha
This is second, third is uh, beauty gold washable, soft and safe. Achhe shararati, bade bimar. Ye paint bhi ho sakta hai koi chamat ka? Neolac, Neolac. Ye paint nahi paint plus hai. This is uh, Excel Everlast, the self-cleaning paint with 12 years of warranty. Introducing Nerolac XL Everlast 12 with Japanese technology. It is paint and paint plus sun. Nerolac XL Everlast 12 self cleaning paint. Chuvaru gade pandan washamani sandar chikino. We did self cleaning and add. Micah Marvel Special Sheets. Hatsuki Hadaki Tu. Jaghar Pe Kambi Ka Badal Ho. Divaro Ko Jab Bachana. Hikaru Tufani Bari. Rango Ko Chahe Na Lao. Andriya Chitri Me Lao. Nero. Oh, Crank Zero. Matlab Nero Na Hero. Yes, sir, Pain Nai. Japanese technology wala paint plus hai. Madam, aap batai na. Nerolac XL Mica Marble Stretch and Shield. Iski do guna stretch rakhi walls ko crack 20 saal o saal. Kon jitna bhi change mausam ka haal. Thanks as much love. Tana pina aya crack. Honey. Nerolac, Nerolac. Done? Yeah. So if you see these are multiple ads and what I said, the paint plus what you started, you can see paint plus in all this communication. The Japanese technology can see in all this communication. There is a Japanese, you know, uh, expert who is there in all this education and jingle which is a part of all this communication so what we have created over a period of 100 years time which is a japanese technology and jingle is a part of each and every communication so that even if we have the multi communication people are able to connect it with one single outcome which is paint plus japanese technology from uh, neralek and you can see our aggression in terms of the multiple communication multiple ads which we are coming up uh, one of the ads was malayalam ad but it is there in the different uh, languages so this is related to communication. New businesses, which we were the late entrant, we started, but now we completed the range in construction chemical. The range what we wanted to complete, not that we want to get into everything. The wood finish is premium, and you know uh, the adhesive which we have a subsidiary. And today, you know, uh, uh, our contribution is almost touching seven to eight percent. And now we have picked up this business is uh, growing at the good rate. Our first objective was that whatever distribution we have, who has started taking uh, the waterproofing from. You know the other companies that we should be able to get back. We are able. We are now making some progress in in this regard. Uh, shifting to uh, industrial side, you know, from the decorative, and uh, you know that we are, uh, you know, uh, the number one in terms of automotive and even industrial. Our position is numero uno position. We are holding, and this is our pride. So actually, if you see whether it is uh, four wheelers, two wheelers, commercial vehicles, and this is, you know, basically uh, we are into this market with the technology. And technology always has been there, but uh, I think now the kind of technology is what we are launching, which is in the area of again energy efficient. Uh, you know that uh, whether we can have the product which can, which has to be baked at the you know uh, lower temperature in less number of minutes, and therefore the lot of uh, energy saving at the customer end, the productivity goes up. So we are making a good strides there, high solid paints and uh, this low bake paints we are doing. So the new segment, seam sealer, underbody black, I spoke about. We are now installed the capacity and you know the supplies are starting. Uh, the uh, partner, which is you know one of the subsidiary of uh, Kansai Paint, uh, Helios, who is then in Europe uh, with their support. Uh, this is again we have got the approvals and we are starting the supplies. And uh, it's not mentioned in this slide, but I spoke about the pre-treatment chemicals and the booth chemicals. So because you know when the the the, the car gets painted in the automotive uh, uh, this uh, factory, you know that goes to the body shop where uh, there's a booth. And which is which require booth chemicals. So those areas are also you know that we have entered. 
So this is basically a st you know, step towards how do we increase the addressable market size in this category where we have the leadership because when we are going to the paint booth, whatever is applied in the paint booth is what we are taking forward. Technology is giving the advantage where earlier, you know, people used to feel that in this business it's difficult to uh, charge price and the technology is the answer which we have started deploying. Uh, in two-wheeler and commercial vehicle, we have uh, gained uh, a market share. We are working on the technology like uh, our Prime Minister launched uh, ethanol 20, ethanol 30. Earlier, the ethanol used to be 5. So now, you know, the same, uh, the paint product, if if, you, if the, your petrol is mixed with the ethanol 20 or ethanol uh, 30, it may not work. So, you know, that, that technology alignment to see that the product work on this kind of thing. So, and a lot of work on the colors. So, you know, because in this industry also, I think it is not... Uh, it is it is not completely industrious. It is also becoming like a glamorous and uh, decorative industry where you know that along with the, so there in the decorative we are saying along with the color we give the functionality. Here along with the functionality how do we give the beauty. So this is you know related to this. And as I said the uh, addressable market size what we are you know, uh, planning to increase. This is the refinish market where again we were late entrant our market share is single digit. But our market share is continuously for last 2-3 years. We have started increasing the market share and our confidence has now gone up that will be able to increase the market share in auto refinish and auto refinish relatively is the better profitability so the more market share we increase there partly the auto uh, you know uh, along with the auto we are able to see the impact of that in terms of the profitability uh, performance coating now this is a big area there is a lot of investment happening from the government side also and this industry this size is becoming larger than the automotive market now and uh, this market is again you know that uh, infrastructure and lot of segments are there in this particular market and uh, we have started expanding this area also and here in fact uh, uh, I spoke in my earlier meetings also we had a problem related to the margins where we looked at that how do we increase the margins in this category and therefore exited the business which was low margin business around 10% of the business and that we made that exit and you know in this quarter that part would be complete and our complete focus is on the premium category product which are high tech product and uh, that's what we are con concentrating upon uh, all the premium products and uh, the Trans Harbor Link, uh, the bullet train project, these kind of projects what we are looking at which are premium, give you a good business and it's a reasonably pro profitable business. So this is one area uh, which we are making our strength. A uh, lot of technology is required and fortunately we have this that support available from Kansai Japan and the subsidiaries like in Europe and Turkey. So all this uh, knowledge, wisdom we are using to, to make our impact. In this uh, line, you need a lot of approvals. So we have set up a team which is basically to take the approval because once you get the approval, then taking the business becomes easy. In this work, 20 to 20, in this year, 20 to 23, we just worked in terms of taking the approval and we made a good progress in getting the approval and now the business uh, will start coming in. Shifting to the manufacturing, this is our capacity, 606 million liter and uh, the digitalization which uh, we are, you know, that piloted in one of the factory basically to see that consistency in the quality, the cost goes down, the cycle time goes up and uh, uh, we are getting a good uh, return out of that and which we are planning to take it forward further. There is a backward integration resin, you know, that which you used to buy from outside, uh, but then we started making, we have been making it, but now we expanded the capacity so that uh, the, the cost part, you know, we are able to take care of and uh, so this is related to manufacturing. In supply chain, the focus in terms of increasing the services, uh, how do we provide, so in fact we have taken a lot of initiative where we are increasing the service at the local level, at the upcountry level. In some of the cases we are drastically, if you are supplying in 24 hours, time, hours, we are bringing down the time to 10 hours to 12 hours of time. So that is what we have done. In the select cities we have introduced this premium services where the premium product which is a paint product, paint plus product can be supplied to a dealer in one hour time. And it is already implemented in how many cities? around 60, 67 cities we have already implemented this has started uh, working. Human capital which is you know that very close to my heart and uh, you know when I started the first uh, part what we looked at is people first that is what I believe in that the future is dependent on the people and we have to ensure the people who are working with us and today's competitive situation is very very different people have to people are in any field uh, you know people are working hard so when they are working hard and external challenges are so high internally we have to create some life and we have created a life at narrow lives where people are working and feel happy about it. These are the areas like health and well-being, security, so security, lifestyle, learning development, awards and recognition. We started in learning and development. We initiated, uh, you know, called Taj, which is Top Abhyas and Jap, 
which is basically we have a mission and vision but ultimately abhyas the practice and we have curated you know courses which are like uh, how do we bring the leadership capital in the people and that you know program we have started in award we you know that uh, we were finally able to launch rsu scheme for our select you know leaders so basically to see that you know they continue to work with the company and they contribute to the company so a lot of things we did in this area there are points which are mentioned here uh, we have created uh, you know for one sector like you know sales force we have created a auto system in terms of that if you perform you get the promotion you know that uh, no assessment like that so some of the innovation we have done in this particular area and the digitalization this is a big effort which we have been doing and it is obviously taking time but probably 70 80% you know work we have already completed because today in the you know that uh, the behavior change the consumer and you know if you actually want to read the mind of the consumer no research can read it and that's why it is not so easy that any company come in and they say that will be able to understand consumer because consumer say something think something but do something and that only you can read that if you have a you know digital process in place through which you are able to track the customer you know on his journey and in this case we are talking about the pain so if you see in the next slide you know, this lot of you know digital initiatives so virtually that whether it is our sales force whether it is our painters with the demand generation the dealers the territory marketing officers everything we are trying to digitalize so that you are able to and through the digitalized uh, digitalization process now we have started tracking that how much sale we are able to convert to the secondary so what material we are selling to the dealer now it has already reached to 34 35 to 40% so the moment we are able to cross 50 60% then we know that whatever we are selling we are able to convert to the secondary sale therefore you know that how your primary sale can go up and so we are working in this area continuously how do we take care of the consumer experience and there are a lot of nudges which we are going to bring in as a differentiation as a part of this digital strategy uh, this is related to our safety you know we go through the global safety quality and we our scores are you know in the high range these are some of the award which we have won one of the award we got is dream companies to you know work for and then there are quality awards and digital in the manufacturing esg as i said it is linked to our uh, uh, this purpose also and uh, you know we are part of consai in japan they are also very conscious about it so we are working in the area of emission energy climate water in the water we are already neutral now we are heading towards the water you know positive uh, we are the company who has committed for science based target you know for the emission and uh, in energy management also we are you know uh, the science based target and the climate change tcfd is something which we are adopting there are very less number of companies in india who are doing this uh, but we are uh, doing this and uh, we got uh, some of the awards from snp ftsc and crisil where we have been rated in our industry we have been rated at a you know top level but even in the uh, if you compare with the other companies we are in the you know uh, higher quartile this is csr initiative which is like uh, the un un objective where they have uh, sd sustainable you know this uh, sustainable uh, uh, sustainable development goals and we have we have a social purpose so we have chosen seven out of that and uh, our csr money get spent in terms of education the water conservation so these are some of the area we are spending our csr these are some of the pictures is this sound coming okay so these are some of the pictures of csr uh, shifting to the financial performance so you must have seen the result so this is our growth uh, in the, this quarter all the businesses have done well all the businesses are double digit growth uh, in decorative also double digit growth the volume growth is also double digit and uh, uh, obviously abita this these numbers you must have seen uh, this is on the consolidated basis the result you must have seen that uh, in the working capital also we have reduced our inventory so you know that uh, there are working capital which was around 30% of the revenue it has come down to 26% now so here also we have made a good progress in this year uh, dividend we declared 270% last year it was 225 but uh, we are in the range of that one third payout 30 to 32% is something which we have been following and also this year you know because 2010 was the last year when we offered the bonus and we wanted we thought centenary year but all covid so this year we considered one is to two bonus also obviously this is uh, subject to the shareholders approval but this is another thing which we consider and this is our capex uh, you can see the numbers in the subsidiaries uh, nepal is going through some tough time but fortunately we have been doing good for so many years but currently the time is not so good for this in bangladesh uh, we got the positive ebitda for the year it was negative earlier and there are strategies basically to chase the profitable growth and uh, it has made progress sri lanka despite you know the what has happened sri lanka but we had grown at the rate of 83% sri lanka and increase our market share 
so uh, we are adopting some different strategies there it worked for us so sri lanka is becoming good and narofix we have acquired 40% of the equity and it has become a wholly owned subsidiary of neralek now so you know coming back to the neralek story so we are obviously when you say decorative industrial business you know i discussed with a lot of you but what we believe and that's the vision what i was talking about that we are beauty and production so we are you know reorienting our thinking it is no more uh, you know decorative or industrial what we say is that we are providing beauty and production and we have surfaces surfaces are home interiors exterior mobility appliances infrastructure so tomorrow there could be a new surfaces but for all the surfaces you know whether we have some some kind of solution you know available so today if you look at you know it's a common topic we discuss about the competition in one of the surfaces the competition is emerging but the diversification what we have and you know that is something which is our strength you know that there are different surfaces and how we are looking at it in some of the areas where we looked at our challenges somewhere it was profit profits somewhere it was sale how you know we are trying to come up with that so this is i think the strength what we have that we are very diversified company and there are areas you know that uh, because some of the businesses some of the surfaces where the based on our technology strength and the service strength i think they give you us a give us a very stable revenue stream which you know is predictable so even if there is a risk in terms of the competition one side you have your strategy in terms of seeing that you know because in this time of competition we are just trying to enhance our ability to respond to the competition because that's the best what company can do and that is what you know i was trying to showcase to you that what we are doing but i think the stable revenue of stream which is predictable and there what segments we have chosen you know what we are working upon is this strength what we uh, bring to you these are the micro step in summation what we have done in last one year these are small small steps we have taken because we are looking for the sustainable growth and we we feel that you know that we have enhanced our capability and ability and uh, therefore we are uh, better prepared for the you know future and tomorrow thank you so much so now we invite the questions you know that we have can you ask someone to combine this but meanwhile we invite the questions yes hi sir this is uh, mehir from nomura thank you for taking my question uh, so firstly on uh, congrats on the paint plus range of products uh, if i can just ask um, the paint plus range you know you kind of filled the portfolio gaps the white spaces that were present uh, so has all the white spaces in your mind that you wanted to be present in filled with the paint plus range so that's point 1 and a few sub questions if you can share uh, what is the saliency of paint pra, paint plus products in our entire uh, you know uh, 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 sales um, so that's uh, the question number 1 sir yeah so actually uh, we decided uh, the list of the product which we wanted to introduce in 22 23 that list 100% we executed there are some more products in pipeline and uh, that will come forward fortunately uh, there is a change in the market also our dealer network the you know earlier they used to resist that more number of products are coming that how do they decide what kind of what number of sku they have to keep but they have become more acceptable now so they are also looking at more and more new products so we'll keep expanding because uh, this is like that we keep spotting in terms of the price point uh, price point or the benefit and uh, so we keep scanning worldwide what kind of technologies are available and uh, therefore keep coming up with the ideas but for 2223 whatever we have decided we have executed in terms of sale uh, the traction is good i'll i'll not be able to share the number but the numbers are continuously moving up reaching closer to the double digit you can say and that is how we are replacing because once uh, you know that we get start start getting the contribution from paint plus product there you know you are building the loyalty with the kind of product which are little different i have not mentioned but we also introduced next generation range of white these are better whites you know it doesn't uh, turn yellow because otherwise the whites turn yellow and and these are you know basically given as a distribution strategy also to next generations you know the, some of the distribution counters what we have created so so it is helping us and i think it is gradually making an improvement thank you a follow up to the question sir is uh, you now you had put in a lot of new initiatives uh, you know in the influencer program uh, you know you were you had earlier spoken about a new go to market strategy uh, where you will showcase you had a different distribution system to push these paints products uh, anything that you can talk about on the distribution front how we have scaled that up because you know we've seen the 
uh, market leader behaving like you know a challenger and growing distribution you know very uh, you know across the board basically so uh, how how does that kind of tie up with the product new product launches and the new strategies that you had spoken about so distribution is incidental you know because uh, the product is the starting point whether we have the uh, good product breakthrough product so that was the starting point paint plus so we concentrated on the product range second is that if we have the product can can i demonstrate to the market that the product can be converted to a sale so that's why the influencer management once we have completed that the distribution is in incidental uh, in last 2 3 years our run rate for distribution opening has been in the range of 8 to 10% but we believe now the stage has come we can scale it up when you compare the number with the competition what they talk about is, is the combination of direct and indirect distribution we generally don't talk about indirect distribution though we have also created a distributor network and we have started tracking the opening of that but generally we don't talk about the indirect network so our run rate has been 8 10% but with the establishment of the paint plus and the influencer strategy we believe we'll be able to scale it up now got it sir i wanted to move to margins um, you know about 3 uh, to 4 quarters back the difference in industrial margins and deco margins you know was somewhere close to about 750 basis points which historically what we had understood was on an ebitda level it was kind of similar range uh, has there been a meaningful i know that you've taken substantial price increases um, you know and bridged that gap so is the gap completely bridged uh, will it uh, you know uh, if there is still a gap will that gap we uh, you know get bridged at all or will that gap still remain uh, and and secondly uh uh so so first that i'll wait for the other one so you are saying gap between decorative and industrial yeah so if you remember that when we started the year the margins uh, were bottomed in industrial you know they were very very low margins and i think we have been talking about it that our target is to see that how do we reach to a double digit so i think we are entering that zone in terms of you know this particular thing uh bridging the gap yes the gap is bridged but the balance gap probably new competition will bridge <laughs> So, so you know it it may happen that way but i think from our point of view uh, what we looked at is that make some investment in decorative because decorative we wanted to catch up with our growth plan and in the industrial we wanted to improve the profitability which uh, i think we have done successfully one reason is the price increase 100% of the customers we have been able to take the price increase so if there was a discussion that you cannot take the price increase we can take the price increase there is a time lag it happens but we can take the price increase there are a lot of other initiative in terms of technology which are differentiated products and uh, the service uh, which we are able to build as a competitive advantage uh, give us reasonable confidence that sustainability because in industrial the important point i think what is important for all of you to know is that whether the margin is sustainable because we have seen up and down up and down uh, but i would say as of now uh, obviously the decorative margins would always be higher but i think it's a in our mind i think we have reached to that area which is acceptable range and uh, sustainability is more important i think so and and on the follow up on that is the industrial price increases have we completely done with the price hikes in the industrial auto non auto non auto industrial segment or there is still some more price increases then we can expect which will still support some margin improvement no we have completed the you know price increase in tits and bits smaller things could happen but we have completed the price increase thank you i'll uh, i have a few more long term ones i'll i'll come back in the queue yeah thanks abhinish here uh, my first question is on uh, advertising and marketing so when i see uh, in terms of brand equity you claim to be number 2 so if you could elaborate that because in terms of advertising budget even the company which came with an ipo few years back they claim that their advertising budget in deco is now bigger than yours so if you could elaborate in advertising budget or also are you now number 2 which tallies with your brand equity second is in your advertisements you are using that interesting line of japanese technology uh, you also mentioned that beauty and protection both are important so in a home decor hasn't customer now moved more towards beauty and home decor so does japanese technology kind of tagline help here because market leader also has this specific products which you mentioned some of those would be unique so does uh, that help in uh, deco home decor business or uh it is too early to call that out so the first question when you talk about the advertising see brand equity and advertising these are two different subjects brand equity is what you build over a period of time so how you take that is uh, top of mind awareness 
the total you know the awareness scores or the brand equity index which you do our research to say companies like nielsen omrg so there in fact are mind share so it is basically if the if the decision is left to consumer to buy which brand is going to buy because in between then there is a distribution influencer who can change his choice so in terms of the recall we are the second highest recall brand uh, just to give you example you know new companies can come in they can advertise just example dunlop the company does not exist but you know the brand still exists okay so it is like that if you see sony the distribution could be very weak but as a brand the recall is very high so that way i am saying the brand is uh, recall is very high and even in the uh, you know mister years if we have reduced our marketing budget our brand recall has not gone down so that's the strength what the brand is you know has built now when we up the advertising the only difference is maybe with 100 rupees we'll be able to build it further somebody if somebody else has to do it he has to spend 200 300 400 rupees to build that kind of thing advertising budget obviously the new companies will have to spend higher but uh, you start spending the results start coming in 2 years 3 years time it doesn't uh, the needle doesn't move you know you know immediately so that was the first question what was the second question yeah second was essentially in terms of uh, the japanese technology yeah so it's like a paint is a product where people don't understand the differentiation the first is whether you know that uh, what is the conviction what is that uh, thing which you want to tell them that yes because of this particular reason because they want to you know people are ready to experiment today but they don't know which product is better so when you are able to word japanese technology i think that gives the first confidence that yes a product is good and i think beauty what you are saying is fine but uh, the concept of today's customer is changed beauty is not what it looks beauty is what it does you know even the general personality people want to see that you know how the quality of this person and i think that thinking is changing the only thing is people have to talk about it because uh, the paint has a role to perform in terms of the expertise which people have not been talking about because it is very easy to sell you know saying based on the beauty but if we talk about it i think in the paint industry if today we say 60 70000 crore 25% is unorganized which is say 15000 crore they are also selling paint so they also provide beauty but i think the distinction can be created through this functional expertise and our research says that 40 to 50% of the people definitely are ready to look at that how product is different the only thing is the demonstration is not possible so therefore it is not like you know that you are comparing this tv versus this tv so how do you demonstrate and that's why some of this uh, the field work what we are saying and bringing the tech on ground that how do you demonstrate that this product is better than that product is the attempt in that particular direction obviously the progress will happen gradually but i am sure that the market is ready for that sure my uh, second and last question is on the tile adhesive so you have done multiple adjacencies in the last one two years so wanted to understand what is the confidence level here because pdlite is very strong in overall adhesive although they are also number 2 in tile adhesive so here pdlite has got a specific brand uh, rof while you are doing it through the mother brand uh, how does it help or is it a problem second is now pdlite is also entering the interior deco paints and they have a much wider distribution in paint shops than you and the number 2 player also so do you see that as a big uh, long term concern bigger long term concern than someone like a grassing so in terms of uh, this adjacency is the confidence when we started obviously we just started without knowing that how much success we'll get uh, from the last year to this year if our confidence was say 30 40% last year it is 60 70% now it is still not 100% but we have made progress what we have introduced is uh, what our distribution can sell so therefore the mother brand narolag will work rof is a specialty area expert area which would be a second point of action the first is that we have a distribution because our strength area is our dealers our distribution what they can sell that's a range what we have introduced and uh, i think from 30 to 70% confidence level we have reached and uh, i think we sooner we should be reaching to a further increase in the confidence level and then the right time would come to get into this expertise area so it's like uh, uh, they have the distribution but the, you know distribution doesn't mean that all the people are keeping paint people who are not keeping paint whether they can sell paint difficult to say because you have to bring the footballs you have to generate the influencer demand it's not so easy you have to spend a lot of money people who are already selling paint why should they replace existing paint with the other paint you know difficult because today the number of shades which are being provided in the industry are quite large so multiple product multiple bases so unless you know that the people who are not who are dissatisfied with the existing company there is the opportunity or you know the, maybe you spend big money in terms of pulling them otherwise it's not that easy that you know people will share thank you sir uh, hi sir avi here from macquarie hi avi 
Hi, hi, sir. Thanks for this presentation. Um, sir, I wanted to just build on your earlier comment about industrial margins being in a very comfortable range. Uh, could you give us a sense how are they versus pre-COVID levels, uh, pre-pandemic levels or normalized levels, just to get some sense on is it still down from that level? And See, highest much? margin in the industrial, uh, I think pre-COVID we must have seen more than 15% down to so EBITDA level. Uh, not sustainable because maybe for some period you must have seen that. More normalized. I, so. Yeah. So I think double digit margins, sustainable margins, uh, you know, I think that is what we are talking about. And with what kind of uh, efforts and the strategy of reached that margin, sustainable margin. So I think the double, double digit margins are sustainable margins. Maybe in between some years could happen where the industry growth is very high or maybe we get a better margin. But in terms of sustainability, I think that would be better. Consider more on the volume and maintain double digit margins. So how far are we be, I mean, below that journey is what I said. So I understand that. We are as double. close as you are. <laughs> okay, sir. Uh, and since, uh, the, uh, you know, uh, just on the sense of the digital investments, now clearly we are doing a lot of work over there. Could you help us, uh, you know, understand how does this compare contrast versus industry benchmark levels? Are we, uh, you know, is this a catch up exercise the way we are doing in new products? Is this something that will be completely different from what is already existing in the competition, some sense in that? It's sense? a mix of both. So for example, like I spoke about project market, we are expand, we are going to the newer market. So it's a catch-up game. We were there in 35, now 55, it's a catch-up game. Some of the products is a catch-up game. But there are many products which are unique games. There are many products where we are democratizing the, you know, thing. As I said, this crack, you know, that which is typically the property of elastomeric paint, but that's very expensive. So now you are able to bring the similar property at the lower price point where you can generate, you know, so I think there is a sufficient amount of uh, uniqueness uh, in terms of uh, special feature or uh, democratization. And there is also a catch up game. Uh, there are certain markets where we are weak. Now it's a chicken and egg story in the weaker market. You put the team first and then get something or you wait for the productivity. So it's a mix of both. What about the influencer marketing, the app based, uh, those are already existing in the market, sir? So there are a lot of uniqueness. We, know by, uh, we started, you know, dispersing the painter incentive in uh, two minutes, Rohit. You know, so we were the less than a minute. So we were the first company to do it. Now uh, ten seconds. So earlier we used to take uh, thirty days. Uh, we are directly connected with the painters now. Hundred thousand painters are directly connected. So so there are certain uh, uniqueness. So what happens is that uh, you know today finding that unique thing, okay, is very difficult because the uniqueness lies in the details, nudges. So our attempt in the influencer marketing also that, you know, what nudges we create, you know, which are differentiated and obviously you can understand that all of these things we cannot talk about, but yes, there is a differentiation. And lastly, sir, I mean, I can sense increasing confidence in the initiatives uh, that you have launched. Uh, would you be able to give us some idea of, you know, we historically we have, if I were to get three years, four years back, we were leading the industry by a wide margin in terms of growth and decorative. Uh, we probably, uh, you know, from there on, there has been a change in pace. But in your estimate, guesstimate, by when do you think we can probably go closer to that path? So, as you said, yesterday years, you know, that we were going well, then it been, there was a period we committed some mistake, we learned from it, we moved on. And I think last year also, I think this point you discussed, and that time also we said that, uh, you know, to any company, any new CEO, you have to give some, what period? Five to six quarters. <laughs> So I think four quarters are over. So I think we are very close to that stage. That is what we feel. I think quarter on quarter we made the progress. Uh, I think in this quarter, fourth quarter, we feel that we are quite close. The results are still not out, but we feel that. So I think we are making a gradual progress and every quarter we have seen the progress. So that gives us the confidence that what work we are doing is moving in the right direction. And uh, our ability to respond to the competition, the changing competition is going up. Perfect, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Hi, thank you. This is Jay from Kotak. Uh, just follow up on uh, Avi's question on margins. So if I interpret it correctly, you're indicating that you're very close to double digit EBITDA margin for industrial business. That implies that your decorative margins are barely about 10, 11% at this point of time for Q results. And uh, if I understand correctly, decorative margins were about 18, 19% pre-pandemic peaks. So when I look at KNPL's for Q performance, there is perhaps a gap of 800 basis point in EBITDA margin for decorative business, whereas others are yet to report, but our expectation is that the gap is narrowed for others to 300, 400 basis points. So is this investment or is that something has changed structurally and 
what do you think is the sustainable EBITDA margin for decorative business uh, based on the visibility you have today? Difficult to give the number straight away, but I can only tell you that when you say 18-19% that time the industry has seen 24% margins also, right? So between uh, the leader company and the challenger brand, there would be a difference of 400-500 basis points. So you can look at, uh, you know, the, the margins what that the leader is operating at, which is about 19%, so 400-500 basis point if you calculate. That's a sustainable margin because that much of money definitely, you know, as a challenger brand, we are required to invest uh, into building our efficiencies, the marketing, advertising, and we'll definitely not shy away in doing that. So I think that would be the sustainable margin. And, and when you talk about this quarter, I think we are saying that we are entering that zone, right? So, and therefore we are reaching to that particular area. So I think margins are in this kind of way. Uh, that's helpful. Thank you. Second is, uh, could you sort of, uh, give an overview of you know what's the outlook for different segments of industrial in terms of and i can understand the environment is quite challenging and volatile but over a two three year period how do you expect each of the segments that you operate in within industrial to grow from a revenue perspective more normalized growth rate and second question there is when we talk to a couple of your uh, listed peers all of them claim that you know they are gaining share in auto coatings and you know in all the three segments you've also indicated that on the slide so who is losing market share and how easy or difficult it is for each company to compute the market share trends in this segment in the industrial if you see auto sector there is obviously uh, cyclic but uh, the long term prospect is very good uh, the kind of capacities which the customers are creating uh, the the penetration of car in India, if you see it is very, very low, even if you compare with China or US, there's a big difference. So the long-term prospect, so there is a cyclic nature, but the long-term prospect of uh, auto is uh, very, very good. Uh, in the other part of the industrial business, which is your uh, high performance coating, uh, even the short-term prospect, medium pro prospect is very good because the government is also putting a lot of focus, a lot of capex is being spent, private or government. Uh, so we see a uh, uh, good progress there. A lot of government business which used to be uh, taking the low quality products now shifting to the premium products and high level products. So I feel that you know there is a good potential even in the next uh, two three years time. But consistent you know growth. Sometimes we feel that uh, if you compare with the other countries where the contribution of industrial is higher. So earlier we used to say so there may be a possibility. There may be a slight possibility that uh, going forward the contribution of the industrial improve. And I'm saying mainly you know even the non auto areas. And there, fortunately, as I spoke about, uh, you know, there is a good business potential even in the premium areas and the profitable you know, business needs. Uh, if a follow up, if I may, uh, do you over the next couple of years expect industrial coatings to grow faster than decoratives, ballpark similar or slower? So, because our market share is low in decorative, our internal intent would be that decorative grow faster. What really happened, we'll have to wait and watch. Thank you so much. So, uh, Tejas from Avinda Spark. Uh, so a couple of questions. So first, uh, at a very broad level, if I see last decade, uh, the first five years were very good till 2018, 19 for the industry. Uh, in fact, till 18, and then we have seen sudden slowdown in the industry. And on top of that, when we see the kind of uh, competition this category is attracted, it is like unprecedented. So when, when we add these two factors, how do you see next three, five years in terms of uh, a growth runway also and the competitive landscape how it is evolving. See, oh, I can only share from our experience that uh, uh, it's not an easy industry. So if you want to make some place and there are players who have entered this industry and we have seen what has happened. We have seen some successes also in a specific states, but there what kind of money is spent and then what kind of market share is created. So if you look at one company who has created a good market share in state like Tamil Nadu, uh, spending what kind of money and then creating a market share of 7-8% over a period of uh, 13 years or 14 years. So that's the best case study which is you know available today. So it's a deep pocket, sustainable question mark and uh, whatever you create a ripple, you know it's about 3 years because uh, what we have seen in that state for those 2-3 years the existing company got impacted but then they are back in terms of growth. So today there is no problem. So there is a reallocation of the share happen and then so if you look at from the long term perspective, you know, uh, sh shouldn't be a problem. Uh, so that's, that's my take. It's not going to be very, very easy. And uh, from our point of view, if you look at it, you know, integrity of our market share is low. We are also 
you know, nine ten percent kind of market share. So we have equal opportunities. It's, it depends that you know how do you change approach. And as I said, that there are certain markets where we are not uh, available or present. You get into those market, your brand is already there. You start taking those steps. And definitely, you know, today when I discuss, some of you people feel that uh, where the market share is low, it is you know the companies are vulnerable. I don't believe in that. You know, ultimately you need to have a strength, and that is what we are trying to build upon it. And uh, if you create your solid infrastructure, background, and uh, systems and processes, I think we have the equal opportunity to go to the newer market and you know build our market share. And so, in terms of market share, when you see your portfolio and regional presence, uh, would you like to share some uh, some insights on region or product portfolio where you are highly under-indexed versus your average, and where your incremental focus will be in the coming period? So in terms of regional, uh, north is a strong market for us, followed by east, and then uh, west and south is a weaker market for us. Uh, product portfolio, uh, we are good in popular and uh, economic category. Premium is a weaker area for us, uh, which through the pain plus we are focusing upon. In terms of uh, rural, urban, or tier wise, if you see tier two, tier three, tier tier four, we have a very good market share. Tier one is the weakness for us, and the services and some of the contractor thing, what we are talking about is basically tier one. Did that answer your question? Sure. And so last one, if I may, uh, extension of Jay's question only. Uh, so when we see uh, when the competition that we spoke about and and uh, the incremental effort that we are putting to gain market share, uh, should we assume that at least in the near term, uh, the best margins that we saw pre-COVID will be a slightly distant uh, uh, event for us to regain, and the focus will be largely on to gain market share and build some more presence in the decorative business. So focus will be to build volume sales, whether it's a decorative. And as I said, there is a good opportunity in the industrial certain areas. Everything we cannot speak, but uh, that is also because there are uh, execution capabilities. Let me accept it is far far better. So there are some low hanging fruits, and and we have realized that there is a lot of juice in that business also. So idea is to basically build volume to you know what possible extent, and uh, to support those initiative, whatever investments are required, you know those would be made. Thank you. My help. Uh, hi sir, uh, this is hi. Rohit from Interest uh, Family Office. It'd be good to have your thoughts on the construction chemical side. Uh, as we understand, we've been under-indexed uh, compared to the leader uh, in waterproofing, and we've been trying to plug those gaps, uh, right? Uh, so, what's our strategy there? I mean, uh, the impression I get is it's more like uh, just catching up and launching those external sort of uh, you know waterproofing products. Is there any differentiation there? Uh, because overall, if you look at the market, I think this is something which grows at maybe mid 20s compared to the decorative paints market, which probably grows at mid teens. So, what's our strategy there? And our what strategy? So, yeah. Yeah, sorry. Yes. Sure. I just wanted to add that I think if we are at a mid, maybe a five six percent uh, share of waterproofing now, of total sales, this is the number I think you'd given one of the calls. Uh, do you have any target in mind as to where this kind of settles a uh, couple of years down the line? Maybe? So far, our strategy was very simple, catch-up game, uh, no differentiation. But as I said that when we have completed the range, now there are certain products which we are introducing, which are differentiated. Otherwise, so far, it was purely a catch-up game based on our distribution. And uh, what we are looking at is because our market share is closer to 10%, the first target is we reach closer to 10%. And after that, then we see how to take it forward. But that's our first milestone. And any comment on uh, the B2B versus B2C mix? Uh, because some players are very aggressive on the project side of waterproofing, whereas someone like a Pedalite is probably stronger on the B2C side. Project side, uh, we were again weak player, but we expanded the team, we expanded uh, the markets, and obviously the waterproofing is a part of uh, that particular thing. And uh, today, the growth rate in project, I think we are catching up or maybe doing better. So we have already caught up you know, because that's like a uh, you have to just establish a knowledgeable techno commercial team you know who goes to this uh, big buyers and able to demonstrate and explain the product so that was again a catch up game for us which we have done all right sir thank you hi sir this is sheila from morgan stanley yeah, yeah. Uh, my first question was on the industrial segment it feels like we're doing very well there we're gaining market share across categories uh, Will it be fair to say that the growth momentum there could be much more superior than what we could see in the decorative segment over the next few years? Of course, there's an industrial cycle which is picking up. Uh, so why are we not putting in more energies there than, you know, uh, more innovations on the deco side? 
So these are separate uh, business units for us. Uh, so there are strategy for each and every business. But I think I mentioned about it that our focus is, you know, when we talk about the industrial, one is the auto where our market share is uh, pretty high. Within auto also, we are trying to increase the size because we are the market leader there and role of any market leader would be to increase the size. That is what we are trying. In the non-auto area, which is high performance coating, the liquid coating, there there is a definitely a potential and our market share is within 20%. And there we are putting a lot of focus. Again, we have taken an initiative in terms of technology, types, the uh, increase in the manpower, and the approvals, because that business is based on the approvals. So we have taken a lot of steps, and we are reasonably upbeat to increase the business there. So where I'm coming from is, isn't it going to be much easier for us to you know, take this business much, make yes. it much bigger than where we are currently? Yes, yes, it is. And in our mind, the direction is there. And with much better margin profile because you talked about yes. more premiumization. Yes. In terms. yes, yes. That's the direction what we are taking. So you can say that's what I spoke about that the fragmentation or the diversification which we bring as a strength. So one side that because our market share is say around 10% in decorative, as I said that there are markets where we can play our game and we can do that. It's a separate strategic business unit. So we are, that strategy is there. But if we see from the market point of view, tomorrow if we are saying the short term there is going to be a fragmentation, and there, therefore, any kind of risk, if you say, one of the mitigation part is that area, and we are definitely working very seriously on that. And the second and final question is on the deco segment. Uh, what I wanted to understand is, uh, going ahead, would the focus will be on market share, you've been talking about it, or on margins? Uh, will we defend our market share, or will we defend our margins? So I think, you no. Know, Margins in the sense that uh, the focus would be on profit. So, you know, obviously there is a, there are, so in our case, we look at our return on capital employed and earning per share. So that's one area, uh, what we are focusing and what profit can make you achieve that. And I think that's, that's the point. So if you say that whether, whether you are so focused that you get 15%, 18%, rather of that approach, you know, focus on profit because with the less growth, you can get a better profitability, but lesser profit. So I think that's the approach what we are taking that uh, generate the profit which give you a good return on capital employed is that is a part of our strategy. Just one follow up here and that's it from me. Uh, is Do you sense that the competitive intensity even in amongst the existing players have gone up much more than you know where it was say three years ago? What intensity? Competitive intensity. Yeah, it has gone up. Because when you get the news that there's new competition coming, so the intensity has gone up. Uh, definitely it has, it has there. In fact, people have become more aggressive. There are certain product categories where the discounts have gone up, the marketing activities have gone up. But it's good. I think uh, one what one good outcome of this activity could be because in our industry the penetration is still within 55%. When these activities goes up, the new competition also come in. The penetration should increase. So there may be a possibility that the market growth uh, is still is, you know itself uh, will show some kind of uptick. The other is the formalization. You know that every year it happens, but the speed of shifting from the informal sector to the formal sector also would change. Thank you. Thanks. Sir, Ramesh Pochwani from Meta and Vakil. Right. Uh, in the recent times, particularly if you see in the IPL, the competition like JSW Paints is having a brand ambassador in Alia but in their ad or in their communication. Indico Paints is having MS Dhoni. I personally believe that a company like yours, Kansai Neuralag, if it can reinvent the communication aspect with a brilliant brand ambassador, it would do wonders. Asian Paints is deploying Ranbir Kapoor but for exterior paint where Asian Paints stands at number 5. Internal decorative paints, they are number one. So, personally, I feel that Negralak has been in existence for a very, very long period, in fact, for decades. And somewhere, the connect with the consumer is lost. So, why not have an extremely powerful brand ambassador in a communication across all media, digital, print, TV, newspapers, you say what? Thanks for the suggestion. We, I thought that you know we should tell our story to you, so that all of you become our brand ambassadors and help us increasing our market share. So 
I agree with you. I think in the past we have had the brand ambassador. Now also we have Ranveer Singh. And if yeah. you see the campaigns, what we had shown here, you know, we are talking more authenticity where we are saying the Japanese expert who is talking about the Japanese technology. Yes. Because in some of the cases, uh, you can see if you see uh, the case like Dow in case of Hindustan liver, you know, that is uh, endorsed uh, by the medical fraternity. So sometime, you know, that today there are many options available in the world of digitalization, even the, uh, you know, influencer recommendation. So there are many, many ways. So we do have the ambassador and uh, I take your suggestion maybe at the given time we'll see. But I think more important is that uh, somebody from the uh, industry itself who is the expert and who knows the product and talk about the product. I think uh, this millennial generation is more hooked towards that. So it will be a combination because in the brand ambassador only help it does is that when you advertise, maybe it catches the eye of the people. Yeah. You know that uh, maybe they are not wanting to see but because of that reason they see. But how much they are able to register the message, so it, it's a mix and match. You have to generate that uh, kind of positivity in terms of yes, this, this is seen. But I think as of now, our work is more in terms of quality, but blended with, because we have the brand ambassador also and the communication, what we had shown there, you can, you, you could have seen that two films are with Ranveer Singh and three films are without Ranveer Singh, which is like a common people, you know, because uh, I think that's a very authentic story, story and that we feel that there is a chance there that, you know, when we talk to the people in their own language, probably it will bring the consumer connect. Absolutely. And second observation was, sir, I stay in Andheri West. And I went to the distributor in the whole area. There are two powerful people. At both the places, I found patient pains executives standing outside the outlet. And unfortunately, at both the outlets, after Asian pains, they are, they are stocking Dulux, but they are not stocking Merolac. Yeah. Neither they are stocking Berger pains. So I think as far as distribution goes, your manpower or force, sales force, should become proactive and penetrative. No, I agree with you, definitely. So, Bombay is one of our weak markets. So, I understand, I, I know on the West market also. I understand whom you are talking about also. Yes. So, uh, it's a weak market for us. Yeah. And as I said that, uh, uh, obviously, we will not be able to do everything because, you know, obviously, you also expect us to generate sales and profit both. But, yes, the investment, what we are talking about, we are moving in that direction the team, the support with the team, the digitalization, the activities, we are working on that. I think, and that's the opportunity for us, you know, that yeah. when we are not there, that's the opportunity available for us. Precisely. We are working on it. And you got a wonderful impression range, particularly for the whites. Thank you so much for giving us the compliments. Yes, all the best. Thank you. Anyone else? Hi, sir. This is me from Nomura here again. Sir. Uh, sir, can you talk a bit on the overall demand environment? Uh, you know, now we are entering in a phase where the pricing leg that we had taken over the past, uh, you know, m many quarters will start disappearing. Uh, and we will be largely left with, uh, you know, a, a negative mix and the volume led growth. Uh, and given the raw metal prices have meaningfully corrected, visibility of any further price increases also seems to be at a distinct. So, uh, so how is the demand environment, uh, you know, currently, maybe in the near to medium term, how is it shaping up? Can there be a case of preponement of demand during the COVID period? And hence, there is, is there a possibility that we can enter a very low demand environment? I mean, we've seen this, of course, not comparable, but in, uh, you know, in other FMCG companies, we are seeing a lot of downtrading to low price SKUs while volumes are remaining flat, uh, you know, smaller SKUs are growing. Uh, so on, a, on an overall demand sense, if you can throw some light on the near to medium term, what is the kind of volume growth that we can expect? Earlier it used to be a multiplier to GDP, but uh, but uh, what can be the case uh, uh, in the near future? Correlation with GDP is still there. So if we expect a GDP growth of 6%, uh, maybe we can expect uh, the demand of 8 to 10 percent and there will not be much difference in value and volume uh, and this I'm talking about for all businesses whether it's a decorative industrial any part of the industrial so because uh, the average selling price would be similar so there would hardly be any difference so that's uh, what the possibility is uh, in terms of this year Diwali is in the first week of November so our past experience says that whenever the Diwali is in the month of November we get a good season because uh, Generally, if the Diwali is in October and now the uh, the, the the monsoon get extended till 
say October. So there is hardly any period, you know, uh, before Diwali for the painting. So this time it will be a longer season, so there could be help in that. But I think there is a stable demand. So uh, even in the automotive sector, what we have seen, one reason was outlier because in the last year, the month of May, because previous year there was a COVID impact, so the first quarter growth has been very high. So now it is a stable demand. Uh, automotive probably one can say closer to 10 percent or maybe 8 to 10 percent demand will continue. Rural market as of now is not much predictable, but I think because the first quarter was not so good, two quarters we saw that rural demand is coming back. Fourth quarter again there is some kind of distance between the urban demand and uh, rural demand. Obviously we are talking based on our data, so we don't know what is happening in the industry. But we believe that still if the monsoons are good or this, uh, you know, uh, the impact of uh, what we are hearing, EA Nano is not there, then I think uh, the rural demand is up because people are uh, spending money, people are, uh, and, and therefore the, somewhere the, the money start, started flowing to the rural market. And if that happens, the two-wheeler, we feel the demand will pick up because of one or two years it was subdued. So I think in all the sector we are seeing a kind of stable demand. Some areas related to infrastructure, infrastructure will see a better demand. Thank you, sir. Second question is on, um, you know, competition and capacity. Uh, everybody has increased capacity in the wake of, you know, the competition as well. How, do you think that historically, you know, we have not seen such a lot of capacity coming in the paints category at the same time, uh, you know, from uh, and and especially given that all the other players are also in a reasonably diversification is there. So then you take any player. You are, you, there can be a case of excess capacity in each of the regions, cumulatively also. So is there a case, possibility that we can have excess capacity and then, um, you know, that can lead to, you know, a possible price, uh, you know, uh, uh, cuts or uh, intense competition? Uh, and, and how do you see that scenario playing out, sir? Well, I guess, uh, at least for the existing players, may not be much of the case. Uh, I can only tell you that. 60, 70,000 crore base of the industry. If the growth is 8 to 10 percent, 7,000 crore is the growth from the 7,000, 1,000, 2,000, 3,000. Even if that is shaved off, how it will impact the capacity of maybe you know your capacity utilization? If it is going up by 3 percent, 4 percent every year, it may get reduced to 2 percent. It will not come down. So it's you know because whatever growth this new competition is going to create will be from the additional growth itself. So to that an extent only the reallocation will happen because that's. 5,000, 7,000 crore every year which is getting added, that itself is a good size. So whatever new competition happens, it will be only from that. So the, you know, the worst risk is that you are not able to increase your capacity utilization. I see that you are quite geared up with a very strong, uh, you know, paint plus, functional plus portfolio to, you know, take the competition head on. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah. Hi. Hi. Uh, can you share something on uh, capital employed in uh, international subsidiaries and what are your views and when are they likely to be uh, yielding some positive things? Sorry, your first question, capital? Capital employed in international... Uh, international subsidiaries. Yeah. Question. And uh, when do you think that they will be giving some benchmark return which you expect mike hello see uh, if you look at our subsidiaries uh, the capital employed is you know uh, as per whatever we had planned and uh, we had uh, additional infusion in our bangladesh and sri lanka uh, subsidiaries so we are very mindful of the fact that whenever the uh, capital is required we are uh, giving the required capital so that you know, all these countries, this, uh, other than India, these countries are going through a financial turmoil. And in this condition, we have to support and we have been doing that. And based on whatever we have supported, all for information, all these four companies have been, are, are in profit right now. Initially, when this, when we took out, they're in big losses. And if it is the fourth quarter results, all these four subsidiaries have turned around. So this is a positive sign and we will be funding these companies regularly if and when it is required. Yeah, uh, can you quantify and what is the benchmark return which you are expecting 
maybe three to five years down the line. Not saying one or two years of term or this. So very difficult to uh, make a, uh, a guess or you know a statement right now because it will take some time for these companies to mature, and uh, maybe uh, I don't expect a, a EBITDA margin uh, in uh, the way we are having in India immediately. But for example, I'll tell you in Nepal they are giving a better return uh, than India, right? Whereas in Bangladesh and uh, Sri Lanka, it is still on the maturity stage. So we believe that it will take about uh, another uh, three, two to three years for them to mature till we get us the benchmark return of maybe uh, 12 to 14 percent. It also depends on because these countries are also facing some challenges. If you see our quarter four result, you will find that uh, the standalone and the consolidated, consolidated in terms of EBITDA is slightly better than the standalone. So obviously subsidies have contributed uh, to that, uh, but uh, but also like in some of the countries, the Jan to March quarter is supposed to be a season period, and uh, Nepal. So in the last year, Sri Lanka was challenged, but you know we still have had a growth of 83%. Bangladesh was a challenge, and therefore we changed our strategy to a profitable growth. So we are making a progress on that. But Nepal, as he is saying, that uh, has been giving us a very good return, but there is a pressure on Nepal. So in the other market, we have made progress. But if Nepal come out of the challenge, I think then the situation will come back faster. And something on Neroflex? Yeah, so Neroflex is uh, wholly on subsidiary now and uh, we have been doing a good business. And uh, again, it's a very good uh, mix and synergy with us, you know, because we have the adhesives for B2B and B2C both. And uh, now since it has become wholly on subsidiary, we have a plans to uh, take it aggressively. Can you share some more thoughts on uh, increasing your size of industry in auto space? Size of auto? Size is, yeah, as, as I said that there are certain opportunity areas like for seam sealer what we introduced which is underbody sealer. Uh, there are fastener coatings with the help of our Helios uh, in Europe that we introduced. Uh, the car get painted in the booth, booth required booth chemicals and uh, there is a pre-treatment chemical where we are not there. So that is what we are entering. So these are some of the opportunities which we have been able to identify. Alloy wheels, uh, we have made some progress. So, so these are the areas through which we are trying to increase the size of the market. Can you share some numbers? How big are this uh, collectively put together? So these areas uh, would be about uh, 600 to 800 crore kind of thing. So these are meshes, but give you a good uh, profitable business. So these are the sizes. As of now, we have been able to spot these areas. There could be more in the pipeline. And they being niche and uh, small volume requirements, margins should be obviously high. And yes. will you be needing some more capex to be done for that? Yeah, so in fact some of the areas where we have entered, we have already like in sealer, we have already installed the capacity. In faster coating, we have already installed the capacity. So that, that we are doing. Thank you and all the best. Thanks. Hello, sir. Uh, Hi. Ajay Thakur from Ayandrati. I just wanted to have uh, two queries kind of addressed. One was uh, you mentioned about one lakh painters reach that you have. Uh, can we get some kind of a sense what would be the universe of the painters across India or, and or what could be the reach of our competition in the painters uh, uh, you know, reach kind of a thing? So number of painters in the country would be around 20 lakhs, 20 to 25 lakhs. Uh, these include small big painters all. Uh, about 7 lakh painters are the painter who are weighted rich painters who drive the demand or you can say 80% is what they are doing. Out of 7 lakhs our reach would be 3, 3.5 lakh. 1 lakh is we have started engaging on the personal level. So our reach uh, of the 7 lakhs, so, you know, because uh, we may be reaching to 10 lakh painter but that number we are not able to track. What we are tracking is about 3 to 4 lakh of number and 1 lakh number where we are able to engage with the painters. Okay. Uh, secondly, I wanted to understand a bit more on the uh, high cost inventory that we had mentioned last time in the last quarter. Have we exhausted that inventory or some part of that is still there in our uh, raw material for the for the, the next it's year? It's more or less exhausted now because uh, as I told you it takes about uh, uh, four to six months and that is more, that, that uh, cycle is more or less over now. Okay. Thanks there is for some, that. You know, in the industrial category because geopolitical situations is not still not so uh, supportive so some items we keep higher inventory but yeah we are reasonably okay now thanks for that thank you yeah uh, hi sir this is archana from morgan stanley two questions firstly just continuing from the point on the capacity addition side 
uh, what are the plans that you have for the medium term to expand capacity to uh, you know benefit from the growing demand and secondly just to get a broad sense of your revenue split right now earlier you all used to mention a split of around 55% deco 45 industrial uh, how does that look like right now also capacity, uh, one request sir it would be great very very helpful to us if you could uh, start disclosing segmental you know performance also in terms of numbers going ahead capacity as i mentioned in the presentation 606 million liters is the capacity what we have we already announced the capacity expansion uh, you know partly the water base capacity expansion so about 300 crore is investment which we have announced over a period of 18 20 months which is started last year so that's the capacity expansion we are doing and uh, other thing to say yeah Sorry, so this yeah. is the tech or new industry split split yeah generally we maintain 55 45 obviously sometime it goes 2% higher or sometime 2% lower we keep ranging from 53 to 57 obviously in the last year the industrial contribution was more so decorative contribution has come down so it's not to be very frank with you we generally don't give exact figure so we say 55 45 sometime it has gone up to 57 also so it is in this in that range only segment wise reporting uh, we generally don't give thank you anyone else so so with that i think uh, if there are no more questions we can we uh, will end this you send it let's just send it so i think we have received some questions from this uh, people who are attending on the zoom also there's a question on roc in uh, financial 23 is around 13% by when can we expect it to go back to historic rate of 20% i think our roc is about 14 point 14 plus so 14 plus so we have already made some progress uh, from you know 12 and a half percent to 14 plus we have come to but 20% i don't know but i think uh, in our mind 17 18% is the right figure and uh, i think that's a right in our kind of mix for decorative industrial you know that is what we are looking at um, by when will the land sale of value 660 will complete so it is not 660 it is 655 but uh, yeah it's in the in the process so we hope to get it sooner so this was one question i think yeah, yeah that's all so thank you all thanks for your question and thanks for the participation uh yeah, after this uh, we have this we have arranged high tea uh, kindly uh, please enjoy and uh, during this course we can always discuss if you have any further questions thanks for coming thank you so much wish you all the very best The recording has stopped.